Welcome to Really Old Movies, I'm your host Harrison Scullin. Today I'll be reviewing a Universal Monster Classic starring Claude Rains. This episode of course is all about The Invisible Man from 1933. So now we'll discuss the plot to The Invisible Man. A mysterious man wrapped in bandages, he arrives at a village inn and asks to be left alone in his room. The innkeeper and his wife, who are frustrated with his secrecy and for not paying his rent, um, they decide that they're going to throw him out. They've had enough of him. And in his room, he, the Invisible Man is conducting experiments to return back to visibility. And out of anger and frustration, he throws the innkeeper down the stairs and the police are called on the Invisible Man. And he reveals he truly is invisible, taking off his bandages and his clothes, much to the horror and, um, and fear of the police officers and the villagers that came in. And as it turns out, the Invisible Man is actually Dr. Griffin. He's a scientist who works for Dr. Cranley. And Dr. Cranley and Dr. Kemp, who also, Dr. Kemp, who also works with them, they find a note listing ingredients and find monocaine, which is a substance used for turning things invisible. They realize that Griffin, in fact, is the invisible man. And they also know that monocaine, when injected in a dog, drove it mad and drove it crazy, which in the English books, though, that they have, they don't print that. So Griffin doesn't realize he's going to turn crazy, but these scientists f figured that out. And Griffin turns up at Kemp's house and he says he wants to work with him and and Griffin reveals he wants to take over the world using his in invisibility and his secret um, experiments. And uh, Griffin and Kemp, they return to the inn that, that he was staying at to get his science books because he left them because he left really quickly earlier. And when they return back to his house, Kemp calls the police as well as Dr. Cranley to help him capture the Invisible Man. Cranley shows up with his daughter Flora who is also uh, Griffin's fiance to kind of sway him to come back with them. And as she tries to convince Griffin, he discovers that Kemp is the one who has betrayed him and turned him into and tried to turn him into the police. And he vows to kill Kemp the following evening at 10 p.m. And so, and then he runs away by jumping out the window. He goes on a killing spree. One of the things he does is he ends up crashing a train. Uh, he ends up crashing a train and that kills hundreds of people on board. And he just causes all kinds of chaos throughout the little village that they're in. And the police decide to give Kemp a disguise as a police officer because they fear that Griffin really will follow through with murdering him. And as Kemp is driving away by himself, it turns out Griffin has actually been following him the whole time. He's just been quiet. And Griffin reveals himself and he kills uh, Kemp in the car by, by tying him up and pushing it off a cliff. And there's a huge snowstorm happening, so Griffin, he seeks shelter at a barn that's nearby to escape the snowstorm. And the farmer who owns the barn, he realizes that Griffin, the invisible man, is in his barn, and he calls the police. The police surround the whole barn and the area around it, and they're able to sway Griffin out by setting the barn on fire, and then they shoot him. And he's mortally wounded, and he's taken to the hospital... And he asks for forgiveness from Flora and confesses that he meddled with things man should not mess with. <clears throat> and as he's dying, he becomes visible. And when he's completely dead, you see him as who he really is, which is Dr. Griffin, not this monster of an invisible man. All right, well, that's the plot to The Invisible Man. Now we'll get into the acting that ha happened in it. So for me, Claude Rains, he really takes the cake. I think he is probably the best actor in this movie 
and the best part of it. And he has that really sinister voice that sounds both intelligent and evil. And I think that was perfect for this role. Now, everyone else, however, is pretty average, especially Kemp. They're kind of hamming it up a little bit. Though I will say the innkeeper's wife is hilarious. She's also a really, uh, really a highlight of the movie as well. She kind of brings in the comedic relief as well. So, yeah, I gave that a 4 out of 5, um, just because I think Claude Rains is amazing, like I said, the innkeeper's wife. But everyone else is pretty average for this era. Now the directing. That's the next one. I think it was very good. You really believe that Claude Rains is invisible and that people are really reacting to it. The actors, you know, they look terrified and horrified, right? And sure, their acting abilities may have been hammed up a little bit, but they really did look like they were terrified of something that wasn't there. And I, you have to give it to um, the director of the film. He did a really good job of this. He also directed... Uh, Frankenstein so you could really tell he has a pretty distinct style when it comes to these horror movies and uh, yeah I, I think it was a great great film uh, directing wise and I gave that also a 4 out of 5 I'm not going to give it a 5 out of 5 because again the acting was kind of ho-hum and uh, he, the director could have helped out with that a little bit so next I'll be discussing the cinematography and the special effects now the camera work is pretty good, um, but really the special effects are the amazing part of this film. Um, you know, it really looks like Claude Rains is invisible and they did all this masking and matting work to, you know, cut him out, but then his clothes still being there. It was really impressive work they were able to do. That was almost 100 years ago, you know, 1933 is almost 90 years ago, and really impressive work that they were able to do and not just with cutting out Claude Rains and making him look invisible but also the floating objects and set pieces they had um, like floating uh, bookshelves and floating items it it was really believable and I really liked what they did with it so I gave it a five out of five I think it was really really well done and I'm very impressed with what they were able to do with it. Alright, now, next is music. So, there isn't too much music in the film, and the music that is in it, it does set the tone pretty well. It's kind of creepy and kind of slow and scary sounding, but because there's so little of it, and I wish there was more, I gave it a 3 out of 5. Uh, just Just because of lack of just because of lack of it, there isn't a whole lot of it. So that brings the total to 4.25 out of 5, and I'm going to round down to 4 out of 5 on my letterbox score. So yeah, that's The the Invisible Man. I really like this movie. Um, I've been really liking these Universal Monster films, and in October, I'm going to review a lot of them. And I'm doing this because I'm really intrigued by the special effects, and by the scary creatures, and... The ability that they are able to make people really terrified of these characters, but also making these characters really likable as well. So, yes, I'm I'm very impressed with with this film in particular. The special effects, like I said, they knock it out of the park. Very impressive work, and uh, yeah, I I really like this movie. And well, that's the end of the review. Thank you so much for tuning in to Really Old Movies. Uh, make sure to follow us on Instagram and on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. That's where the podcast is posted. And we premiere Fridays at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And so make sure to check us out and keep up to date with it. And if you follow the Instagram page, you'll be updated on behind the scenes and um, movie posters, whatever it may be about each individual film. So thank you guys so much, and until next time, I'm Harrison Scullin, and this is Really Old Movies. Take care.